Have you wondered about living elsewhere in your retirement? Well, we have almost daily. No, it's not a simple decision, especially when two people are involved. Hi, this is Gil and Jean of Retire There, a podcast about retirement destinations. We live in Brooklyn, New York, having grown up and worked in this area of the country. We're hoping to relocate when we're both retired. For us, it's the weather, the chaos, the noise, and the yearning to be near nature and not within three feet of human beings. <laughs> That's right. In February 2020, we embarked on our journey to find that special place. We spent a week in Winter Park, Florida, which is beautiful, but something said it wasn't for us. As we were planning for the next trip, the pandemic arrived. Jean then gave birth. I gave birth? <laughs> to this podcast. With so many baby boomers retiring, many must be relocating. Why not connect with and learn from them? Here's a little background about us. I'm Asian, born in Brazil, and grew up in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I'm an engineer turned attorney turned podcaster. I recently retired from a university career practicing higher education law. I love the academic environment, but it was time to do something else. I no longer have to set an alarm, drive in BQE traffic, or work with people who don't always share the same principles. Ooh, did I just say that? <laughs> you bet I did. I traded all that in to binge crime dramas into the wee hours just a little bit to develop the podcast, to volunteer, practice metalsmithing, tackle our possessions. No regrets so far, Jane. I'm not Asian, and as Gil mentioned, I'm not retired. I'm just plain tired. Oh. Born and raised in Long Island, New York, a place I always wanted to leave. I'm a law librarian working in a court who loves his job, but we're retired by the time we select our ideal location. We will be speaking to folks from across the street to across the globe who have moved to their dream venues and more. So please stay tuned. And remember, if you know anyone who has moved anywhere for retirement, let us know. Thank you. Hola, today we chat with Al Salas and Carlos Torres, who retired to Alicante, Spain, known as the City of Light. Yes, the Romans dubbed it Lucentum, which means light. Alicante is located in southeast Spain with the Mediterranean Sea to the east. It is a port city on the Costa Blanca. According to the blog Isolated Traveler, the name Costa Blanca was dreamed up by British European Airways as a promotional gimmick to promote its flights between London and Valencia in 1950. It's home to about 330,000 people, and there are approximately 12 to 13,000 expats, mostly Europeans, though. We recently aired an episode about Valencia, which is about two hours north of Alicante, or 175 kilometers, or 112 miles. I understand that folks who live in Alicante are known as Alicantinos. Is that correct? That's okay. correct. All right. I'm brushing up on my Espanol. <laughs> okay. Jean? Al Salas was born in Washington, D.C. and raised in what was then the Maryland countryside, about halfway between D.C. and Baltimore. Al has a bachelor's degree in microbiology from the University of Maryland and a master's in landscape architecture from University of Virginia. You jealous, Gil? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's my other goal, to be a landscape <laughs> architect. Though he worked in landscape architecture for a few years in both D.C. and Westchester, New York, most of Al's career was at the Association of American Medical Colleges in D.C., where he worked in a variety of positions, from medical education to IT to organizational development. The AAMC is a not-for-profit association dedicated to transforming health through medical education, health care, medical research, and community collaborations. Probably most known for administrating the MCAT and managing the universal application of medical schools. It represents and supports all 172 accredited U.S. and Canadian medical schools and 400-plus teaching hospitals and health systems, including Veteran Affairs Medical Centers. Yeah, we definitely know about that. My sister took the MCAT. Yeah, the MCAT scares people. Yeah, yeah. yeah rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. So Carlos was born in Cuba, immigrated with his family through Spain to the United States at the age of seven. 
He and his family lived in Union City, New Jersey for five years. But after his parents took a short trip to Miami, they packed the car and moved south two weeks later. (laughs) You know, it's funny. I have friends who, similar to your journey, Carlos, I came to America at the age of five and a half. My parents had immigrated from China to Brazil because there was a ban in the United States. So they uh, detoured to Brazil. So it's like all of us, five, six, seven year olds, we come here, you know, and and we learn we learn the language. You know, it's it's really funny. And we're young enough to learn English. So that's a that's a good time to be here. Yeah. Carlos received a bachelor's in economics Mm -hmm. from the University of Florida, Gainesville. For the first two decades of his career, Carlos was in banking, most of it as a foreign exchange trader, first in Miami and then 14 years in New York. The last two decades or so. He worked as an economics reporter and then economics editor for Bloomberg News in D.C. That's cool. Both of these guys, their obsession is gardening. (laughs) Yeah, same here. But they also love traveling and biking. Since moving to Spain, they've developed a new hobby, hiking, with new friends they met in Alicante. They have been together since November 2002, so they're closing in on their 20th anniversary together next fall. Whoa, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it's so wonderful. Gina and I have been together for 32 years and we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. Now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. We feel so fortunate to have found each other. You know, I'm grateful every day. (laughs) Yes, I am, Gina. (laughs) All right, all right. So, Alan Carlos, welcome to our podcast, and thank you so much for sharing your story on Retire There with Gil and Jean. You both retired in August 2016, and when we first got connected, you gave us a hint about your retirement journey. Your story has a bit of a twist in that you first retired to what you believed was going to be your forever home in a small town on the Delaware shore, which is really nice, actually, where you had a weekend house for two decades. But then you landed in Alicante. Please do tell. <laughs> yeah, there is a story. Here. There is yes. a story. So we, uh, yes, we love the little town, uh, Lewis, Delaware, a beautiful little seaside town. Um, actually, on the Delaware Bay, but just inside from the sea. After our first winter there, retired, we realized how when you have 24-7, you're not working, <laughs> how important the outdoors are and and being good weather, warm weather. So we decided just for a second winter to take six weeks in Sevilla because we both had an interest in Spain. Um, we thought the weather would be nice. We went that winter for six weeks. We loved it. We fell absolutely in love with everything about it, the city, the people, the everything. And we literally had sun the entire time we were there. We had no bad weather. (laughs) So we got, we arrived home in late March that year. It was actually record setting wet weather for the next two months. (laughs) Wet, the the first day we woke up, it was sleeting. We had sleet, snow, rain, I mean, it was, it was oh, miserable. Very miserable. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. we turned to each other and said almost to the, at the same time when we woke up that first morning and said, why did we come back? What are we doing here? <laughs> now, were um, you living in D.C. and then bought the house in Delaware? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, years before, uh, for almost two decades before, I had bought a little house in Lewis. This was actually the third one that we done. We'd built but it was more of a weekend place. It was a mm-hmm. weekend place originally. And we'd, we'd go every weekend, really, through the winter, too. It's, it's a lovely little town. Mm-hmm. But in 2016, when we retired, we assumed we'd stay there. We have great community. We are our, best, our very best friends are there. Mm. We were just excited. We moved in. We loved it. And then we thought, Ugh, <laughs> weather. And we also were afraid we'd turn into vegetables because... We we really love this culture of Washington, the, the stimulation. Oh yeah, theater, I music, love DC. Mm-hmm. yeah, all of that stuff. If we had thought about it, really, we always talked about retiring in DC, but financially, it's impossible. It's yeah. just yeah. too expensive. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So that's why we ended up in Delaware. Yeah. Okay. Got um, it. And yeah, so that's how we got to Delaware, and then the rest happened. <laughs> okay, so so tell us once you realized Sevilla was amazing and you looked at each other and said, uh, why did we come back? What were your next steps? 
to get to Alicante. Well, I, we jokingly said, why don't we come back? And then about a month later, I turned to Carlos and said, you know, what do you think about thinking about moving to Spain? Uh, and he was like, yeah, my, my initial that reaction was no. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> That's really? Happen. Oh, oh, wow. Really? Yeah. But what we agreed to is that I would plan another winter trip, but this one would be down the coast of the Mediterranean. And we would pretend that we would do it as if we were tourists, like we wanted to do. We would have a great warm winter again, but we would pick places that if on some crazy wild off chance we were to retire to Spain, it would be in the area that we would have wanted to do it. So we looked at Valencia to Malaga because for us, it's that the climate is the best, sunny all the time. Uh, we knew we wanted to be by the sea if we ever did retire. And it's a fun place to do as a tourist. That's how we ended up touring with a little bit of the idea in the back of our head, although I was like 25% in before we even left. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then about a month in, we were in Valencia for a month and we went to see a property out in um, a little town nearby. Carlos hadn't really updated me on his feelings about moving to Spain, mm -hmm. but we walked into this property, a townhouse. There were views of both the mountain and the sea from it. Wow. The price was crazy and inexpensive. And Carlos turned to me and said, do you think we should make an offer? <laughs> like, oh, my God. All right. What was crazy and expensive? We understand from D.C. and New York, similar pricing. So what is that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. So in, that's what I was about to say. Spain is really, really crazy and expensive, as we're saying, if you're from either coast in the U.S., either the east or west coast, yeah. because we're used to such high prices. Middle of the country it might be a little different. But for example, this place we were looking at was uh, just over, I'll, I'll say everything in U.S. dollars to avoid confusion. Oh, thank you. Thank uh, you. On the exchange, on the exchange yeah. rate. Yeah. Well, we know um, the euro today is, I think, a dollar 13 a USD. Dollar 13. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, but that's exactly. fine. And so in dollar terms, I would say this townhouse was probably about 250,000 U.S. Yes. Mm, a okay. three, three, three bedroom, two and a half bath, town, uh, bath townhouse with spectacular. I mean, you walked in and, and you just saw the sea and the mountains all wow. down. Oh, yeah. my so, God. And, yeah. and what about, is this a single story? It was three story. Three story. You walked in in the middle and walked down to a family room. Okay. Uh, you walked, the middle was the living room and upstairs were bedrooms. I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not ideal in old age, but um, anyway, it was pretty spectacular. And then we saw several properties in, uh, in that price range. Now, these properties, that was a very small town. It was uh, in some ways similar to Lewis in that it was, was a weekend. Say, it, yeah, it reminded me of Lewis in that respect because it was mm -hmm. really, it was about 220,000 people, which is much larger than Lewis is mm -hmm. uh, during the winter. But that swelled to about 250,000 in the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So it was a big like change from one to from one season to the next. Yeah. OK. okay. So it was it was a quaint town in February when we first saw it. And then we went back to see it in October. And it wasn't quite our cup of tea, not because we, we ended up in a big city, but not because it was a big city, but because it was a big city that was just seasonal. So it went from this quaint little town to this like overpopulated mass. Mm, of interesting. OK. And okay. that is something if people are thinking about coming to the coast of Spain, that's something to think about, because the coastal towns, particularly the smaller quaint ones, do tend to crowd out quite up during the summer. So are there yeah. a lot of hotels there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tourism is a huge business in Spain for Northern Europe, uh, especially. Mm -hmm. So there's, okay. a, there's a huge, they can absorb it, but it, the, the character of the smaller towns to us changes too much from winter to summer. Mm. But that's the other recommendation is that we would say, just if people are starting to take notes, we would say, come in the low season and come in high season. Uh -huh. If you're thinking about moving to the coast because the, the character does change the character the character changes. of the cities do change wow so, all right so just define for us when is low season versus high season uh, so low season is winter time even though a lot of people from the north still come south in the in the winter the big crowds are just like in the in the u.s the big crowds to the shore are tend to be in the summertime july and august july yeah and okay august, yeah. gotcha Gotcha. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. So then you kept looking until you found Alicante. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but oh no. Well, we, well, we we took a drive, spent a month in Valencia, and toured around places around Valencia. Then we took about two weeks to go slowly down the coast, 
you know, it's only a, about a six or seven hour drive from Valencia to Malaga. And we took two weeks to get there. Oh, so nice. we, That's nice. Yeah. So we stopped in little towns and stayed two or three nights, multiple little towns and saw oh. others along the way for a couple of hours here and there. And then we spent a month in Malaga. Now on the way, Alicante, people in the U.S. just don't know about Alicante. I've probably never heard of it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. But we happen to be in a Facebook group of people like us looking at moving to Spain. Mm-hmm. And somebody suggested we take a look at Alicante. They'd been just been through and they thought we might like it. Mm-hmm. And we were already all booked every for every, our whole route. So we just took a couple of hours out and went through it. And I immediately really liked it. It's not a huge throbbing city. It's not a tiny town. It's something in the middle. So it has the, the services, the culture, the liveliness, but it's not the the constant thrum and drang or whatever you call it, <laughs> the, 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 the sound of the pounding sound of a big city, which we realized we didn't want to be in anymore. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you checked out the town and then what happened? And so we finished our journey. We loved Malaga also, beautiful, a beautiful city. Um, and for a variety of reasons, we decided to, we decided we loved Malaga of everything. We probably liked that the best. The best. Yeah of the cities we'd stayed in, Ah. but we decided to come back in the summer and check out Alicante because we had met some very nice people here, or we met people online that said, come back and check us out. And Alicante is very inexpensive compared to other big cities in Spain. It's the 11th biggest city, but it's the 17th in terms of um, cost cost of living. Mm. So what what you have, whereas Malaga, it's about, in Malaga, it's about 30% higher cost. Okay. So we thought we should give this town a chance. It may have what we need and it may be lower cost. And then we came back, we booked two months here uh, and two weeks each in a couple of the small towns that we had liked. And then we left open the last uh, couple of weeks or so uh, to figuring we could run back to Malaga if none of this worked out, or we could spend more time in one of these towns. Okay. And after about a month here, some Americans has invited us out to a function, a band playing up in the castle. We got to know immediately like 30 people that were expats, that um, mostly expats. Yeah. Um, they invited us out to for drinks, to meet other people. I mean, it was, a, it was an incredible experience. It's a great community of, of, of ex- expats here. Yeah. Okay. And are these we, uh, from Northern Europe that you're talking about or any Americans? It's... The this group. particular group is mainly Americans, oh, yeah. um, okay. Americans, Canadians, but yes, there are also Germans, Norwegians, Dutch, okay. Okay. Hungary, um, Hungarians. It's mm-hmm. a little a mixture of everything, but it's okay. the, the bulk of it. The, the main part of it is it okay. are American. Yeah. Now, uh, just for reference for our listeners, can you um, tell us where is Malaga? Is it south or? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, Malaga is south and, and actually you c- curves around, Spain curves around west, but it's near the southern, almost the southernmost point of Spain. And how far would you say drive-wise? From, from here? From, yeah. uh, from Valencia, it's six hours. From here, from us, four. about four, four and a half. Oh, okay. South. Okay. So far enough, but that's why the distinction. Okay. Got it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The weather along the Mediterranean coast from Valencia to Malaga is essentially the same. Mm-hmm. There are some microclimates that make some places a little sunnier, some places a little bit less, but it's almost all the same. And I sort of to give listeners a, a, a reference point, the entire country of Spain is about the size of Texas. Oh, Oh, wow. I Actually, never thought about that. Way. that. <laughs> I'll correct that. It's even smaller. It's even smaller. Uh, the entire <laughs> Iberian Peninsula. Oh, they, that's right. If you include Portugal. Uh, if you include <laughs> Portugal, it's a little bit smaller than Texas. Okay. So <laughs> nothing is very far here. Yeah, you can drive practically anywhere within a day. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. okay good to know. Uh, you mentioned the castle. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yes. Well, some uh, some there's a one of our friends always says there's always a castle. And that's the funny (laughs) thing here is that almost every town and village and city has a history that had a, they had a fortress at the top of, at the highest point in the, in the city. And Alicante is one of those. It has actually one of the larger fortresses that remains this one uh, built in the 800s by the uh, Moors who originally settled here, there. 
and then taken over by the Christians when the Christians took over. It's quite a place and they hold events there. It's free. You want, you can go in any time and wander around. It's a it's an iconic view of Alicante is looking from the port up to the castle. It's, it's not a big elaborate castle like you think of Disney World. No. <laughs> but it, it's more of a fortress. More it's, of a fortress. Yeah. Yes. All right. So everyone, I Googled Alicante and this was one of those views. And I'm wondering if you're referring to it's like this little well piece of it, I guess, juts out. Yeah. From yes. afar, it looks like this little building. Is that part <laughs> yes. of the castle? That's part yes, of the castle. That's one of the turrets oh. of the castle. I know exactly and, the image you're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, turret yeah. on the end of a castle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is stunning. And can you, is it open to the public? Yes. Oh, yeah. For free. It's Every free. day. Yeah. That's a little room, isn't it? The one oh, that no, we no. out? Oh, yeah. Okay. You can walk in that little room. But that's like I said, that's just one of the turrets on the corner of the, mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm, fortress. Mm-hmm. The oh, there's more of those. Thing, it's huge, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, huge, it's a, it's a huge fortress. Yeah. Okay, okay. I just thought that was unbelievable in that behind that blue sea of water. I mean, it was just stunning. Yeah. So, people, yeah. you got to Google this before you uh, listen further because it'll give you the view in your head. <laughs> the city, yeah, it looks beautiful. It's very yeah. historic, but it also has very modern amenities, right? Absolutely. Going back a little bit, Al said that he, he, he emphasized he liked <laughs> yeah. it immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take the question. Who didn't? (laughs) (laughs) Right. That would have been that would have been me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) When we first landed here and we parked and started walking around, you know, my vision was always to have be living in this quaint little Spanish village or town with this ancient architecture and beautiful streets and Alicante quite isn't that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) It's much more modern. Yeah. Uh It's more nineteen. It's got a, there's a history, there's a reason, I, I don't need to go into it, but mm-hmm. many of the buildings in 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, oh, wow. big push in, in tourism started here in Spain. So it doesn't have that quaint. It has the original whitewash, the original whitewash Morris village runs up to the castle. It's still it, there. Uh, it's yeah. still okay. there. And there it's are a many, tiny little portion of this. And there are okay. many beautiful buildings that remain from uh, the 1800s. 1700s. Yeah. But a huge number got bombed out. And we'll tell you just briefly why uh, the city is kind of proud of its history and that they were one of the last two cities that held that's firm against Franco. Oh, so uh, hmm. because of that, they were bombed by the Axis powers until they fell into submission. So it, it destroyed a lot of the city. And that for that reason, there's a fair amount of modern and and even is sort of from the 40s and 50s architecture that's not beautiful mm. but there is still beautiful architecture there yeah. here and, mm-hmm. and we like it. you mean like not gaudi no yes. not gaudi. we don't we don't have much gaudi here <laughs> no, no you're no. very lucky <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm not a big gaudi fan oh, i don't no. know you know i mean i know people are in awe and love the architecture but so tell us what do you mean i because i need to know because i'm really interested now what like modernness are you talking about like a downtown kind of wall street look or or what what's modern for example there's a new well i call it a new auditorium at this stage it's probably about 15 years old that is just like any auditorium or civic performance space you'd see in the u.s oh okay Um, okay it looks inside and out. It look, looks and feels just like that. There are some modern office buildings. Yeah, modern, more, modern more of them going up. Modern apartments and more and more going up all the time. And the sa- the city is expanding out from the center. We live about a ten minute drive away from city center, oh, so we're okay. very very close. Yeah, but this area is is expanding quite a bit too now because I don't know if your listeners are, are aware, but Spanish cities tend to be very dense. And once you get outside of the city limits, there's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we don't. Oh, wow. Cities don't sprawl they out. Don't sprawl, which we love. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. one of the things we love about it. Yeah, right, um, right, right. Now, but our area was all developed in like from the 70s, 80s, 80s 90s, 90s, where we actually live in the mm-hmm. city limits. Mm-hmm. But it looks more like a Southern California town oh. in where we live. <laughs> Part of it, yeah. Um, okay. It, it, okay. A, nickna- a nickname for Ale- Alicante is. California. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I love that. 
I love that. <laughs> Gee, this might be where we want to go uh, because I'm you don't right. have the no, because you don't have the forest fires, right? And you don't have all those. Oh, we, issues. we don't have all that mess. Yeah, you, but but it, you have California. Very, yeah, exactly. It's a similar <laughs> climate. Very oh my God, similar. that is so great! Wow. All right, wait, wait. the big question: what? Or what's the big question? The big question is the cost. Wait, before, before you get there, how did you after you decided? All right, the city's for us. How did you decide? What did you do? Did you buy a buy a place? Did you rent the place? Did you? That's what I was gonna. We did what everybody advises against completely. What, <laughs> what everyone everyone says: do not do this. Right. We did right. This. Rent first. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But that la- that summer we came back. Everybody advises, and we would also recommend. <laughs> do as we say. Don't not, do what they did. Yeah. Don't, don't do what do you what did. did. Do not do Except what we did. We're thrilled okay. with what we did. Usually they say rent at least six months to a year in a town to make sure you sure. It, mm-hmm. or a neighbor or a neighborhood or, or, or any yeah because yeah so we spent two we had spent two months here then we spent the last two weeks of that trip here and we saw this apartment that we just loved and we had actually had seen it months before online it had all this outdoor space huge amount of outdoor space wow. it's a it's a penthouse apartment mm-hmm. small inside oh, but penthouse. the views penthouse. are of the we have a view of the water. We have oh. views of mountains. So we bought it before we left, before we even had come <laughs> oh back, back to, the, to oh apply for our visas. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, for, for those listeners out there, they showed us the view. It's just oh, it's stunning. Just stunning. It's, it's stunning. amazing. I mean, I, I saw a view that I would say I was in awe of when I was at your sister's house in Oakland Hills. When you look out, you see the bay, yeah, she has you a see nice this view, yeah. Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, I was just like staring oh, at you. Yeah. But this so, is a comparable view, This is a comparable Yeah, view. this beautiful. is absolutely. I mean, I wish you listeners could see this. It's, but if you guys could send us photos after, because we are, sure. we're, we're trying to upgrade our website. But yeah, if you could, that'd be wonderful. And one of the sure, two definitely. of you. Too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, no. all right, so now let's talk money. Uh, if, if you're, you know, you can give us average, you can give us real, you know, whatever yeah. you want. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. In terms of real estate, yes. Why don't you talk that? Al, why don't you talk so, about the um, the sales? Cause, yeah, cost to buy that. So right. cost to buy, it is so uh, variable, and it really depends on your views and mm-hmm. part of town you're in. You can buy a small apartment in city center for a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. All right. How big is that? Or how small? Uh, I mean, that would be uh, about, probably about a 800, 800, 900 square feet. Yeah. Something one, be- that Ooh, like one bedroom. Home. One bedroom. Bigger than a tiny you can probably get a two bedroom. You can probably get a two bedroom. That, yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Now that's not probably. That probably won't right. have views. Yeah. But you don't. You never know. You can. Uh, we looked at apartments we couldn't afford on the uh, in Center City with views of the sea that were about five hundred thousand. <laughs> yes. With huge terraces that were right downtown. Oh man. Five hundred thousand. Wow. Th- these compared to something in. On the, on the coast in the U.S. would be at least double, if not triple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh easy, triple at easy, least. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. New York or D.C. It would yeah, be on a get it. Yeah. Miami. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can out in just a uh, ten minutes away, you can find um, anything from a three bedroom apartment for a hundred thousand wow. to a penthouse for anything from three hundred thousand to. Well, a over million a and a half or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So it's very variable and it's an odd market. It just, you just really have to see the properties. Oh, and when Al talks about an odd market, it's odd is the key word here because there is nothing like a, a, an MLS uh-huh. service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, here in Spain. And above and beyond that, there is no such thing as one real estate agent representing a, par- a property. You can give your property to as many real estate agents as you want. Oh, nice. And they will all show it. And sometimes they'll show it at different prices, the same apartment. <laughs> yes. Oh, my yes. God, that's insane. It is bizarre. It's, a, it's it an bizarre. insanely weird market to understand. Oh, and agents will not show you an apartment that they haven't listed for themselves because there isn't an MLS. So they have to form an agreement with each owner in order to show the apartment. Oh, wow. So you really, so I think we talked to like eight different agents Probably, in, yeah. in um, Alicante to show us the different part of part places we wanted to see. Yeah. Wow. So now how big is your place or how would you describe it? Ours is weird <laughs> because, <laughs> because we talked about the outdoor space. The inside part of it is about it's a two bedroom, two bath, 900 square feet. Okay. It is um, on the top floor of the building, nice. but the entire thing 
it, when you start including the outdoor terraces and the outdoor sort of living area that we have, that jumps up to about 2,100 square feet. Oh, wow. So the outside, wow. the outside space is even bigger than the inside space. Well, the outside space is about twice as big as inside. Yeah. We're gardeners and we really like it. It's because them. of the gardening. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. But you, so, weren't, you weren't big gardeners in the U.S., right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. 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 So you just expanded. All right, I'm going to I need to see the garden. Not now. But so you you have, I guess, kind of like tropical weather year round. Yeah, it's subtropical to support the, the gardening. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't okay. freeze. here. It doesn't. Uh, in terms of weather, it doesn't freeze here. It doesn't go below. It rarely go below 40 degrees. Oh, cool. So you don't have to take and any plants in. That's good. No, 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 no. 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 Not, okay. Nothing. Nothing freezes. And okay. that's at night, the coldest temperature yeah. in the yeah. winter time. Yeah. Uh, daytime, it'll usually get into the 60s. Into the 60s in the, the winter. Okay. Yeah. And and I read that it's also known, the city is also known to have like over 200 something sunny days. And I couldn't find that reference again, but it's more than that. It's 325. 320. Yeah. What? Wow. <laughs> Are yeah. you making that up? No. Where'd you get that? No. <laughs> okay. I, I can, yeah, I, I, you, it's verified. I mean, it's okay. They, okay. they say 320 to 325. Most of the coast is that way, but Alicante. And some of the cities that have, we have a range of mountains surrounding, surrounding the, city. the city that sort of block the, okay. the bad weather. We'll see storms up north of us and sometimes south of us. And wow. we don't get, but we, but we don't have a water problem because one of the wettest parts of Spain is just a bit west of here. On the other side of the mountains. On the other side of the mountains. And all of our water comes from there. And Alicante has never been under a water restriction, even though our landscape in some ways looks like Parts of Southern California, a little bit like New Mexico almost, at times. Almost arid or desert-like. Almost. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So cool. Okay, okay. Before we go there, I have uh, so many questions. You know, when I'm interested <laughs> in a city, because we might, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, going back to the size of the space. So right. you have more outdoor space than indoor space. Does that include like entertaining? Do you, can you have a tape? You obviously have right a setting out oh, there yeah. for guests and so forth. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. We okay. have the biggest room part of it out there is... I, you call it, I guess, a, in the U.S., you'd call it a three-season room uh, because oh. it, it's, you close it off with um, glass. sliding glass doors. Ah. Okay. Um, in the winter, it's a little too cold. Even with the doors closed, it's a little too cool to be out there for Sometimes. three. Yeah, I would say um, maybe for a month out of the okay. entire year. Okay. It's, it's a little too cool to be out there. But the rest of the time, it's not a problem. But yesterday, we great. had two couples over for lunch, for example. We were outdoors the whole time. Entirely. We weren't even in the glass. We call I call it the glass room because the doors completely slide open, the glass doors. And oh, usually modern. the first thing we do in the morning is go out there and open it up because that's where we have breakfast. Oh. That's where we have dinner usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so jealous. Wait, so so you said it didn't rain, doesn't rain much. Is there a rainy season at all? Yes. Uh, I think late September, <laughs> early October yeah, exactly. is the biggest part, and yeah. then a little bit in spring. It, and well, yeah, in sort of February ish, February, March, September, October, February, March are the okay. are the two, okay. the four sort of wettest months. Okay, I was just thinking in in Florida they call those rooms lanai's, right? That kind of thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, but you don't have we any. Fact, you don't have screens or anything. It's just glass. It's you know, just glass. We don't get any mosquitoes. We have no no bugs up up this high up. <laughs> We Wonderful. don't we don't have bugs. <laughs> Said the magic words. I kill. can't stand bugs, man. Not even ants. No, but, you don't get ants. Well, and so what, we, do, uh, we do have ants. Oh. <laughs> so you're in the penthouse. What floor are you? Um, it's considered the ninth floor, but it's actually the tenth because in Spain all buildings begin with zero okay. floor instead of in, instead of the first floor. Okay. So we're the ninth floor, but actually ten stories up. Yeah. So if you say on the fifth floor, would you get bugs? Probably not the Probably, fifth, but no. if you start if you start talking about the second or third, you might get some you flies. Might, you and might. Stuff. Now we're also very close to the sea. There's always a breeze, so yeah. most of the people in this building don't seem to have any screens. There are we no screens. We don't have any screens in our windows because it, there just are not between the arid weather and the um, breeze from the sea, where we are at least. They just are not a problem. We don't feel them when we're down in restaurants on the by the sea either much. Yeah, okay. restaurants by the sea. Now. Restaurants in town are a different story. In the city, <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay, we can talk offline about these other questions I have. But um, <laughs> uh, so, do you need a car where you are? Do you have parking? Also, we have parking in the building that we're on. We have a space mm -hmm. down in the garage. OK, that came um, with it. That came with it. Exactly. If you live in the center city, in the city proper, you absolutely do not need a car and probably you probably wouldn't even want one. Okay. Mass transit in most 
major cities in Spain is fantastic. Uh, bus service is great. We here in Alicante also have a tram service that is really, really good. Cool. Very clean. All and right. it goes everywhere. It goes, it goes up the like, coast about 90, uh, 60 miles, I think. Up 50, coast. 60 wow. miles up the coast. Yeah. It doesn't go south, but it does go north. A tram Eventually, service. So that's up in the sky, right? I mean, and, no, no, sorry. No, no it's, it's on the, it's like a light rail, like a light oh, rail. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here they call it a tram. Right. So that's great to have. And the, the downside of owning a car in city center is space for parking. Typical city. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And the yeah. price of, of parking. Now where we are, we own a car. We're, we're at garden centers like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those 50 pound mulch bags, they get a little heavy. Yeah, exactly. But we do have friends that live in this neighborhood that don't have, also that, that don't, don't, have own, car, don't yeah. own cars. We can walk to where our doctor is two blocks away, you know, specialists four blocks away. Are There are markets that we can walk to within two to four blocks. I counted them up and the number of bakeries <laughs> that we can walk to. That's a big criteria here, bakeries. Yes, How yes. many bakeries can we get to? We, we can walk to, we can pick up bread or baked goods at a, 17 of them within a 20 minute walk. Oh, 17? So, oh my God. All right. It's not New York, but it's, there's a higher percentage of that kind of thing, even in a more, a less dense neighborhood like we live in here in Spain than there would be in the U.S. Okay. Well, 17 is a lot. I mean, come on. It's a lot. You know, if you're on a Manhattan block, you might not find 17. (laughs) So, Okay. So you actually can walk outside your building without driving to city center. Yes. You can walk. The the light rail is two blocks away. It's two blocks away from us. And in in 15 minutes, we're in the middle of of town. How how far is city center? uh, On the tram, it's about a 15-minute tram ride, about a 10-minute car ride. If okay. we were to walk there, it would probably be an hour, an hour, an hour, an hour walk. Okay. So the tram takes you everywhere, right? Basically that you need. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, between that and the bus service. Yeah, there are also very good bus service here. You can catch a bus here every 20 minutes or a tram every about every 15. Because mm-hmm. there are two, there are actually two lines that come by us. Okay. Now, someone just mentioned that if you're a senior citizen in certain countries, you ride for free. Is there anything like that, that in Alicante? Yes, <gasps> you do. Tell, you get, tell, you get tell. A, you, get a, you get a little card, which we haven't gotten yet, but because we're not a, quite there yet in terms All of right. age. All right. But I think 65 and up. Yeah, yeah, 65 and up. You get a you get a little card from the, from the Metro uh, Authority mm-hmm. and you ride for free. Wow. wow. I love it. So from where you are, you can just walk to get a cup of coffee, though. I mean, you don't have to walk 15 minutes or anything. There's got to be stuff right around you, I assume. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Not all, like we said, not a lot. There's not a lot of variety, but mm-hmm. yeah, we have coffee shops about a five minute walk away. Okay. Um, we, in terms of where we live, if you were to walk even 10 minutes away from us, you're going to hit a much more dense area of oh. this suburban uh, area. Okay. And there you're going to find everything within a two minute walk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you do your grocery shopping that way, or do you drive further to? Any big store, big box stores, or it's a mix. We pick up our fruit and vegetable, some vegetables, and, and the pastries. Don't forget the pastries, and the pastries <laughs> and bread. <laughs> we walk for all of those, and we could walk for the uh, the big groceries, but Carlos usually takes a car. I'll, I'll drive to the big grocery store because I don't want to lug like, yeah. you know four or five time. bags. Mm-hmm. I'll lug it all back. Yeah. Okay, okay, but and- it's it's. Amazing. The, the, if there's one similarity between he, the Spain where we live and the U.S. are those big box grocery stores. <laughs> they're oh. exactly the same. They're really? all the same everywhere. Oh, yeah. wow. So they're, they're chains and all that. Life. Okay. They're, yep. Yep. Okay. Um, can you talk to us about the cost of, of uh, groceries and stuff like that? Sure. Um, well, we did we did a little bit of a calculation when we were trying to figure out the expenses and so forth. I think here we live about 50%. Our budget here is about 50% of what we spent in Delaware. Oh, and wow. Delaware is pretty inexpensive. Yeah. So we've cut our we've cut our costs in half. That's not all groceries. Yeah. Um, that includes other things that are way less expensive here, especially healthcare. Okay. Healthcare is one eighth the cost here, but our running costs are about one half of what they were in in all, the U.S. in already yeah. low, fairly low cost Delaware. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I assume there are hospitals nearby because you mentioned your physicians are very close. What about big hospitals or specialized centers and things like that? 
They're about a 15 minute drive. Yeah. We're about oh. a 15 minute drive from the nearest hospital. And there are, there are several, that's just the nearest one. There are many, many. When you come to Spain, there's two sort of two tier system. There's a private healthcare system and a public healthcare system. Public healthcare system is basically free to citizens, to all citizens. I mean, they, they obviously have paid into it while they were working. Once you're in the system, all the services are free. You don't have to pay uh, in any, anything else. For us expats, the first year we are here, we have to purchase private health care, private health care insurance. Mm -hmm. And that comes with no deductible and no co-pays. Mm -hmm. So once you pay what you pay for health care insurance, that's it. You're, you're done paying for health care. And it is very inexpensive. We, uh, pay, we pay about 300, well, 300 euros, which is about $360 a month oh, for the both of us. For both? Oh, okay, okay, oh, that's okay. not bad. That's yeah. Bad. Okay. For both of us now, and I have tested the healthcare system out. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but but we did test it out. I had a um, previously unknown allergy to papaya, and I had papaya one day. <laughs> yes. What an allergy. Call, oh, my goodness. We call it the great papaya incident. Oh my yes. God. So <laughs> and it was violent reaction, actually. Wow. Uh, I mean, I was really ill. Out of that, we learned... We had a house call. A doctor came on a house call. I went to, I ended up a couple having to go to emergency room a couple of times. By the way, I was served within 10 minutes of being there both times. And we also went to a gastroenterologist a few times to figure all of this out. We have paid nothing for any of that. Not for the house call, not for wow. any doctor's visit. Not for the emergency room for the visits. Emergency. Nothing. We don't even fill out forms. We just show our insurance card. Oh my yeah. God. And that's with your private insurance. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. So the doctor, I guess, is covered through the insurance. That's why he was able to make the house call, which sounds like a, a natural thing they do, right? It was, it was actually the, the insurance company was actually the one that sent the doctor. So yeah. it's, it's oh, wow. their own doctor that they, that they employed, that they send in. Okay. Yeah. Um, we go to our, phys uh, for our annual uh, physical or our dermatology screening, no cost. Mm -hmm. It is, it is all, no copay, no nothing. Wow. And we, because of the area we live in, actually, it's a lot of it's relatively newer. And they're just these little jewels of beautiful little mm -hmm. small doctor's practices. And we feel so lucky. Yeah, you <laughs> are. It, yeah. When we first moved to Delaware as a new getting a doctor when you haven't lived in a place for years, which retirees do this all the time, they move to new places. When we first moved to Delaware permanently. It was six months to see a, pr a primary care physician. What? It was seven, eight, and nine months to get an appointment with a specialist. Wow. And there was one specialist that I saw, nothing terrible, nothing, you know, I'm, I'm very healthy actually, but I had to see one for a, a certain kind of check. He was there once every two weeks on a Tuesday. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, it's funny because Delaware has a lot of um, medical care too, Christiana, the hospital and yeah. all that. But well, you're we've, right. We've yeah. learned this, that when you move to a new place anywhere, there nowadays in the US, they tend to be long waits to get your first appointments. Wow. They, they're, they're, so we here, we called on a Wednesday for our first physical here for new patients, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the receptionist apologized to us because they didn't have an appointment available for the two of us until the following Monday. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> God. All right. Note to self, when moving in the U.S., call and make an appointment from Wait, but... the current place, you know? Okay. Months in advance, just in Months case. In advance. Yeah, yeah. And you can always cancel. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And, and so if you became residents, would you be permitted to get the, the public insurance? Yes. After after living here for a year on your visa, you are a, you're allowed to switch to the to the public system. Now you still have to pay into it, mm -hmm. but it's it's relatively inexpensive. I'm gonna give you ballparks because I haven't looked at it recently. But for example, if you're under 65, the purchase the uh, the cost is about $70 a month per person. If you're over 65, and, oh, and it stays at that level, it doesn't go up. It never goes up. If you're over 65, I believe, I want to say it's $150, so it, it's a month per person. And again, it, it never goes up. It just stays at that price the entire time. Okay, so it's just now one the, year. That's nothing. Yeah, it's just one year. It is. Now, 
some of our friends here have gone on to the public and we haven't because there are you for non-essential services there can be a wait on the public and the private is so inexpensive and we like our doctor and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're keeping it for now for now yeah yeah um, mm -hmm. the only time they suggest that you that you definitely switch to the um the private is if you have public. some to the, sorry to the public is if you have something go horribly wrong like if you get cancer or something mm -hmm. which the the private uh, insurances don't cover that well okay. if you go to the uh to the public you can just pay start paying right into it right then and there and oh, they'll, wow. they'll cover you for that you don't, there's no waiting period there's nothing great. of that yeah. of that sort yeah right. and there's no open it's not like you're limited to an open, open right. Or right, right, right. You, you know if, if something happens you can then do the process to sign up for public. Oh, that's great. What about pharmaceutical, like drugs? Uh, we hear in some countries, you know, it's it's so easy and yes, so readily available. Sometimes you don't need a prescription in some countries. Yeah. What's the case in Spain? It is quite easy. Now, there are some... And very inexpensive. And very inexpensive. Uh, in terms of cost, most of the, the few things that we have, the regular medicines we have, cost is about what our copay was sometimes less than what our copay was in the u.s it mm -hmm. would for statins for example like cholesterol meds yeah, yeah, yeah. um they're i would they're like eight well eight euros ten dollars for a month supply okay yeah all right so Which that's was, easy yeah that was a, that was our copay this is direct pay what was the other question about pharmacy? Oh, how easy it is oh, to get them the first time that you see the pharmacist they will want a prescription and there are certain controlled drugs that they need a prescription each time but for the rest of them, like our cholesterol meds, like gastro meds, my, my and acid, you know, sort of anything for your stomach, anything like that. You can just take the box back that you bought and say, I need, I need a refill of this oh, <laughs> and, they'll give it, and they'll give it to you. I, I have a question. Do both of you speak Spanish fluently yes, and, yes. and do you need to? Ah, well, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start with that one. As Gil said, I was born in Cuba, mm -hmm. so I do speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, I speak Cuban Spanish, which isn't necessarily the same as Spanish, <laughs> Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's close enough. So it's very, I obviously for me, it's very easy, even though I do speak Spanish. I'm currently doing an, a language exchange with a Spanish woman here. She wants to improve her ling English and I want to improve my Spanish. So once a week we get together for an hour and a half great. over coffee and we, you know, 45 minutes in English, 45 minutes in Spanish. Oh, that's great. Oh, and, I love that. And we switch back and forth. And that way, you know, help each other out. Al does his own thing. I <laughs> am learning Spanish. Okay. I foolishly took eight years of French in school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I love that. So I started first, I started first with some online stuff. And I went with a, a tutor beginning in February, twice a week on Zoom. I can understand 90% of what I hear, I'd say, and I can respond maybe 75%. Mm -hmm. I, I am reaching a basic conversational level. What we found, most of our American friends did not speak any Spanish before they got here. Some are learning and some are getting by without it. They're, they're, they've all learned to get by, to learn enough Spanish to go to the market, to order from their favorite, you know, their favorite stuff from the butcher or whatever. And sign language, sign language sign is always language. good. Um, <laughs> oh my God. But what about when you go to the doctor, for example, yeah, the doctor you know, speak and English? you want to you like explain some, you know, weird feeling. Yes. 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 Uh, our doctor is fluent in English. Our, and uh, actually even our so, dermatologist. So far, we've only come across one doctor that is, has not been fluent in English. Yeah. Okay. Um, and okay. For him, I went in to sort of explain yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But you can eat, I mean, that was the gastro guy with the papaya incident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can even find gastros who speak English here. Yeah. Uh, and the hospital will provide a translator. If you are, uh, if you go to a hospital, they, they have the translators on staff. Um, there are enough, uh, English is the common language for all the Northern Europeans that are here also. And so there is enough of that that you can get by without it. One of the reasons I wanted to move here was to learn a new language and to keep my mind active. So mm -hmm. I'm enjoying learning the language a lot mm -hmm. and it feels good every day that I'm okay. improving. Because when great. I saw your surname, I thought, oh, maybe he has, you know, the sense. I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> okay. okay. There's an interesting history there. His family's yeah. from New Mexico. Go ahead. We found, well, so a Spanish line came from Sevilla, probably mostly in the 
1500s, late 1500s. Oh, wow. We learned only about 30 years ago that we were probably Jews who converted to save their necks during the Inquisition and then left the country as quickly as possible. So my parents actually spoke Spanish, but not to us. My dad, oh, wow. it was that generation where they didn't want you to, yeah. he didn't want us to have accents, mm. all of that stuff. So I heard just a little of it growing up, but I never learned it. Okay, French. but you can do immersion at home with Carlos, right? I mean, Carlos, you, yeah. can, you can just speak <laughs> Spanish, man. I mean, no, 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 that's what I would do. No, my it's, father forced it's us. It's like having your spouse teach you to drive. It's, it's not going to No, no, work. no, no. Yeah. My, my, it's not a good idea. My parents <laughs> brought us here to America. It's a long story. It's a sad one, but I won't go into it. And my father forbade the kids to speak any English at home until we were 18. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the old, we didn't know how to write though, because unless they, they sent us to Chinese school. And at the time there was only like a few in Chinatown, New York, and we lived in Brooklyn and it was, it was a pain to get there, you know, and, and they didn't have any right. money. So long story short, it would have been great because I would have learned how to, how to uh, write and read, which I don't have any of those skills, but it did force us. I would say as more kids joined the family, there were seven of us, the younger ones started speaking more and more English, you know, at home. So then we would kind of sneak it around. And till this day, the older few know Chinese, Cantonese, you know, comfortably that we can help people. So like if I'm out on the street, I can, I can kind of help someone. And I think it's helpful. So immersion, I recommend it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we've read that spouses teaching each other is not a good idea. We, <laughs> we, we do speak Spanish to each other a little bit every day, probably more and more, more and more. But okay. it's not the best way to learn. Necessarily. <laughs> okay. All right. So you another want to stay in a relationship. <laughs> an- another question: Does Alicante or Spain allow for same-sex marriage? Oh, they were way before the U.S. They were one of the first to make it not just legal, but in every way the same. So adoption, they did a big campaign that basically said everybody has someone in their family that's gay. And even the smallest town here, we feel very comfortable. We are never, we never even get a side eye. We are, uh, they are extraordinarily welcoming in that regard. Actually, also in the language, I, I forgot to mention, if you try just a little bit, the Spanish are so wonderful about um, helping you and meeting you halfway on the language. I've gone to the bakery, you know, again, the bakery. But I, we I've see that's the a theme here. <laughs> that's a theme. That's a theme. Yeah. But at the bakery here, I, you know, I've said in Spanish, I'm learning, but a little by little. And mm-hmm. her face brightens up and she says, yes, little by little, that's all you need. Wow. And, you know, and it's a one. And that's our friends here have said the same thing. Yeah. That everybody very understanding. I think in some ways in Alicante, possibly more than other places, because it has a history of being a destination for other pla- other people from other countries. Sort of a, a vacation area or zone area. Uh, for, oh, for, for, okay. For, okay. Yeah. Now, are you so, learning also how to write and read or is it conversational mostly? I, I started with really, because I was on my own, mm-hmm. I, I, mm-hmm. I think I can write and read probably okay. a, better than I can okay because when you emailed me I was very you know I was impressed and I was like oh I got to get my dictionary out Google Google <laughs> Google right. duo I, I have duo, a question whatever. you said yeah. you've never got the side eye and even in these small towns which is great does that also go for races <sighs> that's a good question that is a very good question I and we don't have firsthand knowledge of this mm. but and I hate to pass along stuff that you read on Facebook for yeah, example of course, on of course. social media <laughs> But, for example, in these in these social media groups that we belong to of expats, you periodically do get people talking about that they feel a slight tinge of racism yeah. toward, toward them. Now, what, what they also say is, but it's nothing like in the U.S. I exactly. Mean, that's all, yeah. They almost always preface. They say, yes, we feel it. I, I have definitely felt it. But it's nothing like I got in the U.S. So... Yeah, it you depends know. on and depending on where in the U.S. too. I mean, are, exactly. are, are there are there many Asians like Japanese or Chinese in Alicante? Well, not many. Again, this is going to sound racist, and it's not. No, 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 no. I'm glad <laughs> there are, Look, we know there are stores here, little little shops that the Spanish lovingly, very lovingly called Chino stores, mm-hmm. Chinese stores. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. all run by Asians. Mm-hmm. And if, what? What's the? They call them. They are. They label. They themselves call themselves Chino stores. They. Okay. They. The sign on the outside says Chino. 
It would be comparable to a like a like a dollar store in the in the U.S. Uh, the poor chinos, the poor <laughs> chinos. Oh man, I I gotta get there and change that. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. All right. All right. What about you want to travel? How far is the closest international airport? Yeah. 20 minutes away from the city. Wow. Which airport is that? It's, it's Alicante, Alicante. And, oh. it, and it has great connections all over Europe. We are, um, if you're in Alicante city center, it's probably a 15 minute drive to the airport. For us, it's about 20, 25 minutes. Wow. Yes. Because so many Northern Europeans are coming here on vacation. There are, there's a lot of connections throughout, throughout Europe coming straight to here without having to go through Barcelona or Madrid, a lot yeah. of direct flights to here. And inexpensive. We had before COVID, now we haven't traveled uh, by flight, uh, by air, by air. but our, yeah. we had many friends here who said, well, I looked up the prices, yeah. 60 round, $60, 60 to $80 round Europe. trip to London, to London, nice. to Paris, to Edinburgh, uh, very inexpensive. And, and then what there's about also flights? The, uh, well, I was going to say there's also train service, which is really excellent. Yeah, we just came back uh, about a month ago from a four day weekend in Madrid. It took us two and a half hours by train to get there. Nice, easy peasy. Takes you from the middle of town here to the middle of town there. Nice. It was it was really oh, that's really great. fantastic. What about yeah. flights to the U.S. flights? flights back home or things like that. For those we do have to go, we do have to make a connection. Usually Madrid or Barcelona. Okay. Usually Madrid. Okay. So we travel from here to, to Madrid and then Madrid to wherever. Madrid has connections to all over. Miami, there's the Miami-Madrid flight that's uh, very popular and Madrid to New York, Boston, Ch- Philadelphia, Chicago, okay. almost almost anywhere. And and you guys have relatives back in the U.S., yes? We do. I have a, I have a sister and a niece. Uh, my sister is in Miami and my niece is in Chicago. Oh, okay. Um, so they, we, I haven't seen them in, we've been here in Spain now for almost two years. I haven't seen them in that uh, since then because of COVID, yeah, of COVID. course. Yeah, yeah. But Al has some family. I, I have four brothers and their families in the, all, all over the U.S. And, and they range from, and nieces and nephews from Maryland through to California. Basically what I told them was when I left, look, you guys, I'll beat you anywhere in Europe. But we've done the U.S. <laughs> we've been there, yeah, done yeah. it. Come here, or come to France, or Italy, or wherever you want to go. I think our time of traveling. One of my brothers said, "Are you going to set a time? Like, when are you coming back to the U.S.?" I said, mm, "I don't think so." Wow. Yeah, I mean, there are no plans, right? You consider this your "quote unquote" forever home. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we do okay, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now we have friends here who have actually. There, some of them are there now in the U.S. Mm-hmm. They tend to go and spend like a month and they hit family mm-hmm. all around, the, whatever family they need, friends and all of that. And then they're back. I want to go back a bit to taxes and things like that that are imposed on homeowners. What is that? OK, so if you live in Spain for more than 183 days out of the year, you're considered a tax resident of Spain. So let's leaving homeownership aside for now. If you're here for more than 183 days, you have to pay income taxes. Now, the U.S. and Spain have a tax, a a dual tax agreement. So that means you're not going to be taxed twice. Because we're U.S. citizens, we always, no matter where we live, we have to pay U.S. taxes, U.S. federal taxes. Right. And those come first. You fill out that form. You fill out your 1040. You send it in. You pay whatever you have to pay. Mm -hmm. And then you fill out your your Spanish tax after that. Luckily, the, the time frames are staggered. Um, the, we're, we have to put in our tax, our taxes here by June 30th in the U S it's April 15th. Mm -hmm. That gives us, you know, two and a half months Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. get the the taxes done here. Whatever tax you pay in the U S is deducted from any tax you have to pay in Spain. Oh, great. Great. Now Spanish taxes are higher than U S taxes. Oh, and it's a, it's a progressive system depending on how much you make. So, yes, you will have to pay taxes here. But like I said, anything you pay in the U.S. is deducted out and it depends on, on your income. The other thing you have to be you need to be aware of are the wealth tax. There is also a wealth tax in Spain. It's uh, calculated on your total global wealth. So anything you own uh-huh. in terms of financial assets or real estate or any of that sort of thing anywhere in the world is considered as part of it. Wow. Now. Preface that know. too by saying, "How do they know?" Well, you have, you're supposed, you're, yeah, you, you you're are, supposed to. You're well, supposed yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Them. Now it's not everywhere in Spain. If you, for example, if you live in Madrid, there's no wealth tax. You're oh, it's in Alicante. Oh, but in Alicante oh. there is. 
The upshot is that there are huge, the deductions are humongous. For example, here in, in the, I'll call it the Valencian community, which Alicante is part of, right. each person is a lot, you can, you can deduct out $700,000 per person <laughs> from your wealth, reduce it by that much wow. per person <laughs> from your wealth. I'd like to have that much starts. to deduct. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Before the tax start kicking in. Mm -hmm. The other thing is each person is also allowed to deduct 300,000 euros, which is 360,000 US, well, 350,000 US from real estate nice. up to that, uh, the, the amount of your house, but 360. So that normally knocks out your house right there. Right. Not to wow. about that. You'd have to be really, really, really wealthy okay. um, in this community. Mm -hmm. Now, each community does sets their own mm -hmm. levels. But in the Valencian community, you'd have to be really, really wealthy to get that wealth tax kick in. Got it. The offset is real estate taxes. You mentioned real estate mm -hmm. taxes. Mm -hmm. They're really, really low here. For example, <laughs> what we pay for this apartment is a roughly about $500 a year. Oh, wow. That's my God, nothing. that's nothing. nothing. That's Yeah, exactly. $500 a year for the apartment. That's great. And that includes parking. Yep. Okay. For your apartment, is, is there like an HOA? Is there any fees? We do have one. Yes, we do mm -hmm. have one here. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think, I think most apartment buildings do have them. Something, yeah. But they're, again, they're really, really low. They're usually uh, somewhere between $50 to $150 a month, somewhere oh in that goodness. vicinity. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And, and what does that cover? For us, that would color, cover cleaning of the, of the common areas, the electricity for the common areas, we have a pool in the building. Ah. Well, not in the building. Next, you know, outside is an outdoor okay. pool, okay. and uh, includes cleaning of that use and cleaning of that. The all, all the maintenance, landscaping, maintenance. Okay. All of that. So there's right. a superintendent or someone in, for the building. They're contracted. There's an okay. administrator. Yeah, there's okay. a president. What you'd call a president of a co-op board or condo board. Okay. Um, okay. Who lives in the building, and he or she is in charge of dealing with our administrator, our management company. Okay. And between the two of them, they hire people to come and do whatever needs to get okay. done. Okay. You know, I forgot to ask, what are the rents like in your area if people don't buy? Um, yeah, yeah. Again, let's let's say a normal two bedroom, two bathroom, eight hundred to nine hundred square foot apartment in Center City. Very nice area, but again, not necessarily beautiful views or anything like that. Would go for somewhere between six hundred to seven hundred US a month. Wow. wow. Nice. Um, okay. The rents are tend to be even in terms of comparison to the U.S. tend to be even less expensive than I think to buy. It would be difficult here to find a rental for more than if you find something for fifteen hundred dollars, that would be, that would be astro considered astronomical here. Yes. Wow. Yeah. We have friends with a three bedroom, two bath. Yeah. That all of the rooms look out onto the sea, and they're paying about nine hundred, that eight hundred euro a month. So that's about nine hundred wow. US. Yes. Wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Okay, yeah. and it's um, like a lot of these European countries, I guess, where if you rent the place, it doesn't come with a refrigerator or stove, right? Most of them do here. Most of them do. Oh, here. they do. Yeah. And and well, this this could be a downside. <laughs> It also, most of them also come furnished, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Spanish taste in furniture is not great. <laughs> I'll warn everyone about that. Yeah. But yes, yeah. it, they, most of them come from, at least with some furniture. They comes with all kitchen appliances, usually does not include utilities, except for water. Water is, is yeah, usually, is almost always included. Oh, you have to, you have to pay nice. the electricity on your own. Okay. Okay. So here's an off question. You know, I see a lot of these um, House Hunter International shows and it comes sure. furnished and most of the furniture is just, you know, not my cup of tea. I'm wondering like if, no, seriously, if we, we, if we do this, and I think there's a lot of value for our listeners. If you rent somewhere and you don't like the furniture, if you eventually move out, you have to obviously bring that furniture back or something. Right. I, I'm just wondering in your travels, do you know if people store that furniture or can you get rid of we, it and then replace it and then say, this is what the furnished apartment looks like? Some of, it, it will vary. It, it'll vary on the, the depending you know what on I'm the saying. owner. Yeah. 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 Um, We've heard we, of people, uh, friends, for example, who have uh, said, told their, their landlord, hey, listen, we love this apartment, but can you just take the furniture away? And the landlord usually, you know, nine times out of 10 will say, sure. And they'll, they'll yeah. take part of it away for you and store it. 
themselves oh, and then okay. you can furnish it yourself. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, or, it, or you can even get rid of individual pieces. You can oh, have them say, oh. you know, can you get rid of this dresser? And <laughs> oh, we'll nice. bring our own. No, I mean, I know this sounds petty to you, Gene, but like I like creature comforts, you know, and, and I like I like what I like. I, I want to be at home. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But, okay. but it does vary. Some of them will say no. They can leave it. You know, yeah. Leave it. Okay, then you just hide it in some place and you pay yeah. it for the fee. Okay. Right. Um, so these amenities, uh, I mean, uh, so the appliances that they leave uh, have to be in um, that that they provide have to be in working order. Uh, I guess they're they're up to snuff and in good shape and stuff, right? It's all over the you know it's like yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's a- now one thing you will not probably find often in Spain is a dryer. <laughs> Ah, good to know. Uh, well, you'll find washers. Obviously, most places come with a washer. Okay. But dryers are rare. There's everyone line dries here because it's so dry and yeah. sunny. And, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it'll dry in a, in a half hour. Uh, within yeah. an hour, your stuff is dry. Yeah, and so, then you just get a nice steamer, you know, to get all yeah. the wrinkles out. Okay, <laughs> exactly. all right. Yeah. So, I mean, you have so much outdoor space, you can dedicate a whole 200 square feet to drying. The lines well and mo- most buildings have a rooftop that anybody that everybody uses their sets they're drying out a, oh, really? a communal area for with yeah. with oh, wow. clothes dryer <laughs> yeah. i never That's heard of funny <laughs> so yeah. you guys don't have a dryer either i take it we do we have a, one of those <laughs> I, knew it. I knew it see <laughs> my jean i knew it yeah. what well, now i well i will say spoiled, we do, spoiled. but it's one of those washer dryer combinations it does both uh, wash whatever, and dry. whatever. Um, but <laughs> i heard those are those that great we only use it for our we towels. only use it for towels ah. really yeah. we always pick the the clothes itself because they those washer dryer combinations here will leave the clothes very very wrinkled they can very uh, wrinkled can. So we just we usually don't uh, don't use the dryer portion of that. And you honestly, use those wooden clips. You use those wooden clips. Classic. On we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like your mother did, right? Eh? I know, but I'm just asking. Just I love the smell of it. Actually, I, the smell of a dry of clothes that are dried on the line. It's just <laughs> well, we're fresh. Near, that's a fresh. We're near the sea. So we get that great sense. Okay, okay, okay. She Financial. Doesn't believe me. She doesn't believe me. <laughs> I don't trust. Guilt, guilt not buying it. No, she's no, not. No, I know you. You don't know Gil. Um, financial <laughs> banking. Do you have to open an account? How difficult it is, to, or do you keep your monies in the in the U.S.? You know, we keep our monies mostly in the U.S. We did have to open a a local account for utility payments for the mm-hmm. local local kinds of payments mm-hmm. very easy we just opened it with our passports even oh, before we wow. left here. okay yeah yeah we opened country. it before we left okay yeah oh. before we were residents we opened it oh, with just wow. the passport and the the one thing to mention to it's not a warning but it's just mm-hmm. a be aware yeah that in spain you will give out your checking account number to everyone and their brother <laughs> wow <laughs> Everyone considered like a normal thing. The utility company will have it. The phone company will have it. Sure. Your your HOA will have it. And it's just a debit for all of those. Nobody writes checks here. Yeah, checks don't I, exist here. They literally don't. When we asked if we got a checkbook, the uh, bank teller. She thought we had three heads. <laughs> yeah, it, they literally do not use them. Yeah, wow. is identity you, theft a problem? No. Strangely, no. Because they have more protections here on any any transaction. We have above $50. Okay. We get an approval that comes into our phone that we have to approve it. Even the lower amounts, we get a, not- a notice to our phone that, that there has been a transaction. Okay. So okay. it's two-step verification for almost everything. You, yeah. you have to verify that it was right, then you, mm-hmm. you know. I won't go into the details, but basically yeah, it's, it's yeah. highly secure. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can't stand the two-step, but we got to do it. And do it. Yeah. 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 Right, okay. I'm going to move on. I know you have the University of Alicante, but- ah, social activities. But, but yeah. <laughs> do you consider Alicante a, a college town? No, wait, not really. University of Alicante, even though it's called the University of Alicante, is in the, one of the suburbs of Alicante. Ah. Um, oh. In San Vicente de Respeche, which is about a- 15, 20 minute drive from Alicante city center. The college crowd doesn't really mix in that much with the city crowd. And I don't think it's that big, quite that big a campus either. Yeah. I'm not sure how big it is, but it, it doesn't, uh, unlike other places like Granada, for example, which has a huge university or um, what's the place we went to outside of Madrid? 
Salamanca. Oh, okay. Salamanca. okay, okay. Yeah, she had big college towns. No, but what in terms of entertainment, mm. there are large performance spaces tend to get big shows and there are small performance spaces. There's music all the, all over the place. There are, we saw this main Spanish touring company put on West Side Story in the main theater oh, wow. in Spanish. <laughs> oh, nice. And nice. It was really cool. I mean, yeah. with, you don't even need to know, know the language because yeah. you, you know, know the story. story line. Yeah. Okay. What about hiking? Talk to us your, about your love for hiking. Oh, uh, our new, our new love. Our new love. We, we just love it. it. Yeah, it's so it much is, fun. It you is, didn't um, hike before? Did you not hike before? Or was it? We lived in Delaware. Think of, think of Delaware. It's flat. <laughs> it's flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Flat. All right. You're right. walking. Yeah. We would hike when we visit our brother, my brothers in California, New Mexico. Uh-huh. It wasn't a regular thing, but here, every about every two weeks, we go out with this group of friends we have here. We hike different mountains, and and it's wonderful. Uh, usually, we go for about a three or three to five hour hike. All of them are within usually twenty minutes to an hour uh, of yeah. town. Although there is one, the last hike we did is up the mountain is actually within Alicante City. It's two tram stops from us. There's a the Serra Grossa, which is right in the middle of the city. And it's a huge, not a tall, tall mountain, but it's a it's a true mountain. We did that one after Thanksgiving, the Friday after Thanksgiving to walk up to, oh, to nice. walk, up, <laughs> walk up to dinner. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Of good. course, then we walked from that mountain into Center City and had and, and ate some more. And ate some more. <laughs> A lot of cake, huh? Bakery goods? (laughs) Well, we actually found, funny you mentioned this, but we actually found one of the key things for me, I'm going to go off off topic a little bit here, but one of the key things for me was to find a place that had great ethnic food. Yeah. Yeah. I love Indian. I love Ethiopian. I love Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You name it. Now you're talking my topic. Yeah, I love it. And that is not something that is easy to find in Spain. Mm. It's very, the Spanish love their food and it's excellent food, yep, right? yep. but they're not that into ethnic foods. Interesting. Ah. So the, the key is to find a city like Alicante that has a big expat community yeah. or that is, in a, is, is a destination for Northern Europeans or Italians or anything else to come to the beach, for example, yeah. then you're going to see these ethnic restaurants. And Alicante has some great ethnic restaurants. Oh, um, some of the best Indian food I've had oh, has wow. been here. Well, and the reason I mention it is because after this hike that we did on the Friday after Thanksgiving, we went to this little Venezuelan place where arepas and, wow. and that sort of thing. And it, was, it was great. Oh, um, the cool. one thing, strangely, the one thing that you cannot find. Even here in Alicante, where it's hard to find, even here, is really good Mexican food. Wow. It just, because the Spanish do, do not like spicy. And wow. so a spicy, any food with a lot of spice, they tend to shy away from. So it's hard to keep a restaurant going that, that serves spicy food. Yeah. Now, Indian food can be very spicy, but it's a different. Yeah, exactly. Right? Ah, but, okay. But the upside, the thing there is the Brits. The Brits love Indian oh, food. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And there are a lot yes. of them. Right, right. And there are a lot of them. What about seafood? Oh, 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 different oh ethnicities also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, now you're, now you're talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you don't get ethnically uh, varied preparations yeah, of it and but that's fine yeah fresh seafood is, is abound here is the thing here uh, anywhere you look we heard your your podcast for valencia when we were sort of yeah prepping for this one yeah. and we, we know you talked about paellas mm. and yes and valencia was is the you know the, the birthplace of the paella mm. however here we're although we're part of the valencian community alicantinos don't like to call it valencia they, we call it arroz which is rice don't, yeah, call it, don't call it yeah don't call it paella ah. what do they call it arroz, arroz. which is which no, no, is rice. But that's just rice i mean paella yes. has meat and but that's veggies. what they call it though oh they call well, that's it. what we call it it's, so then what do you call just, what if you just want to buy plain rice <laughs> what is that oh uh, that, that's arroz too <laughs> so yeah, you have to be you have to be a little more specific, I guess. But yeah, so there's this little uh, little rivalry between the two cities for who can make the best paella or arroz. And it's only and, two hours apart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Huge, huge rivalry. Now, what Alicante is the first to have used seafood broth in their arroz or paella. <laughs> 
thing. Which, you go. <laughs> which is why I mentioned it when you said seafood. That's why I mentioned oh. it. Yeah, because the, the traditional Valencian paella does not have a it, seafood broth. Ah. That's, it's made with uh, with chicken and rabbit and uh, some beans Ooh, yeah, rabbit. and rabbit. snails. Snail. Well, the traditional Alicante one is called abanda. Mm-hmm. And that's made with fish stock, and it has shrimp and calamari mm-hmm. and that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All that's right, so since we're cool. on food, can you get good pizza there? Oh, yes. What? <laughs> yeah. Pizza, oh, there are a lot wow. of Italians. There are a now, lot of Italians oh, okay. in Spain. And uh, it, Italian food is a very popular food here, actually. Sure, yeah. sure. Now, don't, don't think slice like in New York. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that, oh. that you can't you can't go down for a slice. That you, well, can't you can get do. a good you can get a good so, pie though. You can yeah, get a good pie. Very good yeah. pie. Okay, I'm gonna go back a second. Can you get sashimi? Sushi? Yes. yes. Oh, we have a really good sushi restaurant oh. about a uh, 10 minute walk from us. Oh, I was so oh, worried. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what about street food? Can, is there street food there? Um, it's not a huge street no. food culture. Ah, okay. yeah. mm, okay. But you can get it. It's, yeah, not a, not common. Okay. But yeah. the but, meals but, the meals aren't costly, right? I mean, you can get no, a nice dinner. Expensive. Like what? Yeah. Well, so you mentioned dinner. <laughs> really, dinner, <laughs> the, the main meal here is middle of the day, oh. is like, Two to two thirty is when most yeah. people have their main have meal the of the day. Meal. Yeah, because That's after siesta, yes. No, before. before. Oh, you know, you have, you have wait, you have siesta then... after? Yeah, I mean, it so makes sense bodily wise, but okay, okay. I mean, no, it <laughs> yes. makes sense after you like have a big that. meal, you want to take a nap. But I thought siesta was earlier in the day. That's why. No, yeah. it's it's at about four or five. That's when you take your siesta. <laughs> <laughs> the menu del dia is very common here, middle of the day. It includes typically bread, appetizers, sometimes a selection of them, uh, more than one, a main, usually dessert or coffee, sometimes dessert and coffee, and a drink, a beer, wine, soda. And they can range them. We had one the other day for, it was $8.50, 8 euros 50 about $10. $10 for all that mm-hmm. to 15 or so. Uh, you can go to 20 25 too, but those are, those are the oh, fancier man. restaurants. man. Nice. Uh, and you're and it's not like a fix that you, you you always have a selection of things you can choose from. You choose your main, choose your app, okay. that sort okay. of thing. And that is that's historically that is the one thing, one of the very few things that Franco did that he did right. He believed <laughs> that everybody that even the common workers should be able to go out and have a good meal out. Mm-hmm. That tradition continues. That's funny. Okay. That no, that's wonderful. And and about the siesta, I was reading a few years ago that especially in, in the big cities in Spain, some of the businesses are trying to get rid of siesta. Is that true at all? In the bigger cities, not here. <laughs> in the bigger cities, yeah. It's a, it's a tradition that is sticking. Okay. The young people, I, the young people that, I, that I speak to, for, this, for example, this, this woman that I have the, the language exchange with, mm-hmm, she's, mm-hmm. she's in, her, in her early 40s. They, she doesn't do siesta. The younger people don't do siesta that much. Even though they go out late. Yeah, they do party. <laughs> they cool. love to party. But yeah, they're, I think Spain is is, historic, is sort of known as being one of the most sleep-deprived nations around. <laughs> All right. So like our friends in Sevilla, they take, they've gotten used to it. So do you do siesta? Off and on. Two or three times a, two or three times a week. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> two or three days so a week, we'll was- do a little siesta. That must take some getting used to, right? I mean, when you first go there. Oh, no. <laughs> you fall right. <laughs> no, he you does. fall right into that. When Gene is slowly descending to his pillow, it's like he's entering <laughs> levels of REM. You know, I, on the other hand, I'm an insomniac. Just doesn't work. I will probably be with the young crowd, not doing siesta. Um, Partying until all hours of the night. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But um, what about like if I wanted to take art classes, pottery, you know, stained glass, welding, stuff like that? Is that like common and around you? I have seen that. We haven't looked for it. I've seen ads for it. The only thing I can think of that might be an issue might be the language barrier. Well, no, I've actually seen people on expat groups say that's how they've gotten to know. Oh, interesting. uh, Local Uh, Spanish people is by taking classes like that. And this is even in small villages. So right. I expect that it's here, but we haven't yeah. looked for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's just on my list. Not necessarily saving this for the last, although we've spent, we've taken up quite a lot of your time and I can't, this is going to be an amazing episode. Yeah, thank you. Our car, what is it? We've Valencia? had a blast. Yeah, Valencia, right, is mm-hmm. our top episode right now. Just so you know, people. Are is it really? Yeah, yeah. It's the most downloaded at this point. And we've been doing okay, this for now. a year. 
now this rivalry between Valencia and Alicante. <laughs> you, know you know it. You know it. We have to beat Valencia. Yeah, Come on, yeah, guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you share with us any resources you found helpful in moving to Alicante? I know you said something about a Facebook group. Yes, I think that the most helpful thing, the most helpful thing for anyone moving abroad to me would be to join a local Facebook group or groups. There are expats in Spain. There are American expats in Spain, which is even better. There are actually a couple of them. Uh, one is American expatriates. The other is American expats in mm-hmm. Spain. Mm-hmm. There are then, if once they narrow down the city, they should look for a local. We're members of Americans in Alicante and expats and friends Alicante. And I think there might be one or two more. Four or five. Yeah. Four, yeah. Oh, so, wow. Now, in this city in particular, we also have a very active expat group that is about half Americans and the other half Spanish. And it's a WhatsApp, just a big WhatsApp group. And there are, they're just constantly talking about what's going on in the city and, and organizing get togethers. And then we're in a subgroup from that of mostly Spanish that has just formed. So I would encourage people to start with the Facebook groups. They, they're really helpful on really getting on the ground information about what's it like here, what the neighborhoods are like, that sort of thing. Great. Did we talk about, is it difficult to obtain a visa in the country? Oh, we, have, we haven't talked about that yet. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but I would say you have to be, you have to plan and organize. It's the process from beginning to end, I would say takes, I would give it a good three months. It took us two, but give yourself three, <laughs> just in case. Okay. There's a lot of paperwork you have to pull together. It's not difficult. It's just a lot. For retirees, for example, there are many different types of visas you can get, but anyone who wants to live here for more than 90 days at at a single time, at a stretch, you you have to have a residency visa. Um, Most people who retire here get what is called, it's going to have a funny name, but it's called a non-lucrative visa, (laughs) which means that, yeah, which, (laughs) which means that you're actually won't be working while you're here. On that visa, you're actually not allowed to work when you're here. And but it's also the easiest one to get because you're promising, basically promising not to take a job away from a Spaniard. Sure. Um, okay. But you're promising to come here and pay taxes and spend money. So mm-hmm. they love that. And all you have to do is prove that you can support yourself, that you can buy the private health insurance, that you don't have a criminal background, for example. It's like a checklist of five or six things that you have to do. Still, while you're still in the U.S., you apply through the, the Spanish consulates there in the U.S. for depending on the region that you belong to. They all have a website with all the requirements. required documents. Yeah, okay. but it's like I said, it's not hard, mm-hmm. but it's time time sure. consuming. Okay, yeah. say you're not allowed to work, but can you have an online business? Good question. You're not mm-hmm. supposed. To. You're not supposed to. <laughs> uh, well, you're not taking not... away a job from anyone, but yeah, yeah I see. Right, right. If you do that you would not want to talk about that when you're applying. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you, and you wouldn't want to show use the, the money from that to show to prove your financial worth. Uh, as okay. long as you're good, as long as you have the financial worth to, to qualify, it may not be a problem, although I guess later reporting the income. Oh, well, we should probably say how much that is. Well, for a family of two, um, uh, for example, you have to have, and again, and this is in U.S. dollars, you have to show 40000 U.S. a year in order to be eligible for the, roughly, in order to be el- eligible for the visa. That could be in, that money could be in a, an investment account, or it could be the Social Security payments that you're getting every month that total up to 40000 for the year between the two of you. Um, between the two? Yeah. Okay. Both of, two people together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's roughly about 40000 U.S. Oh, wow. That's good. So that's for the non-lucrative visa that allows you to stay there more than 90 days. Yes, exactly. Oh, God, that's great. So if your 401k, any of that stuff. Okay. Any of um, that stuff, yeah. Okay, okay. Actually, I forgot to ask a non-related question. How close are you to a beach? We are 10 minutes walk <laughs> to the beach. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I just had to. No, you know, that's, and, that's key. It's key. It's important. Okay, okay. We, just in case. Okay. One of the nice things about Alicante and uh, Malaga also, and several of the cities, mm-hmm. is they're smack right on the, the center of the city is on the beach. And most of the people we know live within five to 10 minutes walk of the beach. And how many months out of the year do people go to the beach? Uh, through October, early November, I think. I'll break this. We can break this down into two. Spaniards tend to go to the beach, can probably go to the beach about 
seven to eight months out of the year. Mm-hmm. Wow. If you are a German and come here, 12 months out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like now, because one of the things that we talk about all, often is I want to get a place where you can see the ocean. And I, I, you know, I find that very, very tranquil. And yeah. Jean always uh, also veers towards finding a place where, like he had always wanted to live in the Pacific Northwest. If you've heard us on other shows, it's always this kind of stretch. So a lot of trees, <laughs> a lot of, and so we think a happy medium would be where you could be close to the water and then also close to the green. The question right. is always, and, where can you afford that? And it sounds like your city, you can. Yeah, right. I mean, you can see both. You can yeah. get pretty close. You can. The, the yeah. green is the, is the tougher one. Yeah. The ocean, uh, the, the sea, the Mediterranean yeah. is, is like right here. So right, that, right. that's. But like you a can forest. Check that off your list. The forest you'd have to drive out to. Yeah. I mean, the Sara Grossa, we can send you pictures. It's wild, but because we're arid, you know, it's pine trees. So they're not, uh, it's not like a Pacific Northwest forest. Closer to Valencia, it's greener. There are more forested. The problem for us in that area is it's tends to be flatter. So Mm. the views are a little bit harder to come by. What I would recommend to anybody considering moving Mm -hmm. is spend some time doing what we did and drive down the coast. It's not far. Mm -hmm. And you get a real sense of what is so fascinating is an hour different and uh, an hour distance. And you have a very different feel of a place. Mm -hmm. Many of them uh, close to Valencia, there are some towns, uh, La Heredora and Amunyecar that are feel like the mountain is going right into the sea. I mean, wow. like right Ooh. there near Malaga. Yeah. You can probably find something depending on how much city you want and what kind of town feels to you. Okay. Uh, but it, it will take looking at them and, and get a feel for it. So if I flew into Alicante and I wanted to rent a car, I would need a license. Yes. I can't use my license. You can use your license. You can use, you can use your license. to rent a car. You can use your U.S. license. Yes. That what they what they also suggest if you're just coming here as a tourist and want to drive around is that you go to AAA and get a what is called an international permit. Basically, it's just a translation mm-hmm. of your U.S. driver's license. Whenever we came here as tourists, we always had both, just in case. We've never been asked for the international one. We always just use the U.S. But they say if, they, if the police stop you, for example, or if a rental company does ask for it, you can have it. It's twenty five dollars. I want to. I think it oh, is something like okay. $20, twenty dollars. Twenty twenty five dollars from AAA. Okay. And you know, you, you give them a, a picture, and and you get your driver, the international driver. Now, license. if you move here, though, that's no good. You can only use it for six months. You will have okay. to get a Spanish license. Okay. Which because, is a, a whole other issue. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. But um, if I wanted to rent a car, let's say at the airport, I, I assume they have those at the airport. Yeah, yes. And um. <laughs> I'd have to get insurance there. Oh, no, no. My my credit card, my American Express probably would cover that internationally, maybe. Okay. We have experience with this. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Say, so, yes, it does. We um, On one of those reconnaissance trips that we took, we rented our car to take this long drive <laughs> from, from one of these, from, you know, one city to the next. Yeah. And yes, I used my Amex card to rent mm-hmm. the uh, the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, Am- so Amex does have auto insurance, does cover your rental. Good. Um, right, right. We ended up, I did end up scratching the car because, <laughs> as, you, <laughs> as you know, Spanish streets are in some small oh, pueblo yeah. are yeah. tiny, teeny, tiny, stretchy. Oh, my God. And Oy. yeah, I was backing up and it was not good. Oh. Um, so I did dent the, the back of the car. What normally what will happen in this case is that the rental company will bill you, tell you how much it is to fix it, and then you pay for it. And then you send the bill, the, the, exactly, the, 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 how much you pay the bill to mm-hmm. Amex, mm-hmm. and they will be, reimburse you. Okay. And you- even there, the, the costs are minimal. I, when I dented it and I looked at it and I thought, this is going to be like a $2,000 mm-hmm. thing. And mm-hmm. I en- ended up bringing the car back and they t- I told them what happened. They said, okay, we'll go check it out, come back to you. He came back and said, uh, 250 euros. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh that was is, worth no, the less, story. And <laughs> less than three hundred dollars. Yeah. And and do you drive on the right side? Yes. yes. This is oh. this is like the U.S. We drive on the right side. On the right side. And are cars expensive? In, in are cars Wait. expensive in Spain? Oh, yes. we drive yes. in the right lane, but not no. I, in the, I we drive on the right in the side. Car. Oh no! It, it, it's, it's just as the U.S. Exactly the same as the U.S. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 
That's it, you, Glenn, you were asking about the, the, the price of cars. That's the one thing that is as expensive here as in the U S okay. um, you'll pay, you'll pay the same for a car here as you do there. Okay. Okay. And, and gas prices, I think are higher by you, right? Gas yeah. prices are higher. Okay. Now that the cars tend to be smaller and more fuel efficient. So, but you still end up paying more for gas. Yeah. There's no getting around it. What is it now? The price, is it like six a gallon? That's okay. How many? I, I have to, I no, have no, to no, don't worry about it. To don't liters. worry about it. I'm used to, I'm used to yeah. doing the price in liters. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> but there, is, there is a way around it. Are people driving electric cars there? That's becoming more and more popular, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, there's a uh, proposal in Alicante that in two years, in order to drive into the, the city center, you'll either have to have a hybrid or an electric car. They're not going to allow gasoline powered wow. cars in the city anymore. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. So I have a VW, um, you know, a, a little golf, but do people drive like Fiat's or, or what do you have? Yeah. The, there's a Spanish company called Seat, which is actually owned by Volkswagen. Platforms are very similar to the Volkswagen cars. Okay. Uh, but yes, it's usually Seat's are very popular. Peugeot's are popular. Oh, Fiat's. Yeah. Yeah, Renaults. Yeah. The Japanese and and Korean cars are st- starting to make inroads here. You're starting to see more Toyotas, yeah, more yeah. Hyundai's, that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But okay. uh, really, the, the the European ones are the ones you see most of. Okay, okay. Oh, Very oh. few Fords and Chevrolets. <laughs> okay. How is Spain on saving the Earth? Are you guys? Um, do, do you recycle everything? Because you know here there is still so much to be done. So much. We have. Four trash cans. <laughs> What's interesting here is that there aren't like in the condo buildings in the U.S., they all have a trash chute and you just drop everything down mm-hmm. here. Whether you're in a house, a business, a, an apartment building, whatever, everybody takes their their garbage to the, to the various different dumpsters recycling. For, okay. for recycling out on the street. And everybody uses the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yes, they're very good about that. And and like Carlos said about the uh, electric cars and mm-hmm needing in two years, needing to have one to get into the center city. All of the EU is getting more and more progressive that way or more and more strict that way. They're pedestrianizing city centers like right and left. We have plans for much more pedestrian streets in Alicante coming. They're encouraging trains, discouraging driving in, in all sorts of ways. So I would say overall, the EU in general is doing, is doing a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys compost? That we don't do. That we don't. <gasps> we don't. We're not great cooks. But you're plant people. Yeah, but oh, we, that we do. Well, that yeah. Well, well we're now we, we don't. have terraces. You know, it's <laughs> composting on a terrace. If we had a yard, I used to have a compost pile, but composting on a okay, terrace. Okay, okay. Yeah. But you know what? If you're not great cooks, that means you eat out a lot. Yes. 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 Oh, that is what <laughs> I want to do. <laughs> that, because that's on so my list. Expensive. It's, it's so that, inexpensive it's so here. Inexpensive. Mm-hmm. It's it's really really inexpensive, and it's you know it okay. it, it comes out to almost the same as cooking at home. Alicante is definitely on my list. All right, the the, the real <laughs> last question. Yeah. The real last question. You have any advice for somebody moving to Spain? Oh, gosh, that's a oh. that's a that's a prime question. Um, do it. <laughs> yeah, no, they've I given say, us so much. Yeah. I would yeah. say take the time to look mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. to get a feel for it and yeah. and decide for yourself. We've known only one couple that went back that came here, ah. went back, and it was because they missed their kids. Their kids. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We would have that. So you have, to, you have to think about that. You have to think about family and friends. Mm-hmm. But if you have sort of that adventurous spirit and, and, and it's not for everyone. <laughs> By, by any stretch of the imagination. But if, you, if you're adventurous and you enjoy a challenge and you enjoy, you know, doing things out of, the, out of your comfort zone, it's a great experience. Yeah. No, I, I think it's, it's, you don't even have to be that much out of your comfort zone. I mean, for plus, us, it plus would you be- you could do it for half a year. Yeah, I mean, for, for half a year, yeah. you know, I mean, we have a child that we're kind of stalking, even though he's 22. Um, <laughs> no, just, just love him, Max. He's so much. And he graduated college. I mean, the good thing is he got a job right away, but I was hoping, not that he wouldn't get a job, but, you know, I just... I just miss him, but, <laughs> but you know, yeah, but he has his life. And, um, I think if we were living abroad for six months a year, that, that would be fine. And, um, he would enjoy coming to see us. Yes. All right. That's All right. it. That's oh, it. thank it's you been, guys yeah. so much. Thank you so much. You were wonderful. You're so nice. It's been great talking to you. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. And if we make it our way there, Hey, you know, 
Oh yeah, <laughs> come, come, come to Walker. Walker. Yeah, come yeah, to yeah, Walker. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so Thanks, so much. Okay, sure, Have you're very welcome. Bye bye. All right, we'll be in touch. Bye bye. Okay, bye. bye. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you know someone who's relocated for retirement and wishes to share their story with us, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is gg at retirethere.com. Our website is retirethere.com. And you may follow us on Twitter at retirethere underscore. Now, if you've liked our show, please subscribe and rate it in Apple Podcasts. In the meantime, be well. Be well.